So you've been using Linux for a while now, and you've always had that urge to want to try Arch Linux, but you didn't want to go through the process of looking at all the documentation and going through the manual install of how you actually install Arch Linux. Well, guess what guys, there's an easy way to go through the Arch install, and I'll show you guys that right now. So as I stated in the intro, I wanted to show you guys one of the easiest ways to install Arch Linux. And it's a very simple process and I'll walk you guys through it. But a while back, Arch Linux added, or the people behind Arch, the community, they added a install script to the actual ISO that will allow you guys to go through the install in a very simple and fast way. And let me go through and show you guys how to actually install it. So let's get started. So first off, let me go through and show you guys how to get the ISO for Arch Linux. If you don't know, you basically go to ArchLinux.org and then click over to the downloads uh, tab. And then you can find a mirror that's close to you, or you can actually use the torrent links that they got up there. And then they also have the PGP signature and all that stuff. So you can verify uh, the download, but the MD5 hash right there. So you can verify that you download it from the correct source. And I always recommend if you want to download it directly from a repository, just select the one that's closest to you and it'll download in a very fast manner because you're closer to that server. But that's pretty much it. All you have to do to get the ISO and let me click on one of them so I can show you guys uh, what it actually looks like. It's just basically a repository and you just click on the download right like right here this is the main download it was actually updated uh november 1st but it's the one that says 846 megabytes so just click on it it'll download the iso it also has the md5 hash there so you can verify the download as well so that's how you get the iso but there's a whole bunch of information on the orch wiki that can help you with the install but like I said, I wanted to do it the easy way. So I wanted to show you guys how to actually do it using one command and then walking through each step of the install. So let's switch over to my virtual machine and go through the install. So I'm on my virtual machine and I have the Orch Linux ISO booted up. And so all you have to do, I just wanted to show you the guys this, but this is how you actually get into it. It has a multiple options in the installation media bios that's essentially what this is but uh you want to select the first one unless you want to go to with speech or if you want to go uh copy to ram uh you can boot existing os if there is an os on here but i'm assuming that you don't have an os so we're going to skip that we're not going to do that but you can test out the memory as well as uh, look at the hardware information and then also a reboot option but what we're going to do is select the first one and wait for this thing to actually boot up and then we'll start this simple installation and like i said this thing is super easy cool so we are there this is the normal arch boot up of the live iso and then you have to go through the installation from this point you know the typical manual Arch Linux or Arch way of installing the operating system on here. But as I stated, Arch Linux actually added a script in here that will assist you with it. And I'll show you guys the simple command now. All we have to do is type Arch install <laughs> and press enter and that'll start the full install of Arch Linux. And like I said, it's very simple. Just follow along. I did a detailed uh, manual install of Arch Linux in the past, but I figured I would show this for people that are new to Linux and they're interested in installing Arch, but it does take time, which a lot of people don't have, you know, to actually install it. Okay, so I wish I could make this thing a little bit bigger, but this is the best I could do at the moment because it's using a virtual machine and it's 
super weird when it comes to recording but the first thing you want to do and all you have to do is read it but it says select one of the above keyboard layouts and the one we want to use is uh us and then you can you can use the number or the full name so we could just type us or we could type 26 but i'm gonna just type 26 boom that'll select our keyboard and then the next thing is our region uh so i see right off 53 is the united states so let's press enter there now the next thing it asks you for is the device that you want to partition or the hard drive of the system and for this virtual machine i have the 32 gigabyte virtual hard drive so that's represented by number two which is what we want to mount at the mount location where the install will go so let's uh select two press enter and now you can select what type of dish you want to set up so it could be butter fs uh ext4 xfs uh f2 fs and what i'm gonna select is uh ext4 so i'm gonna just put one press enter and so the next thing is asking if you want to set up encryption for your hard drive which is super cool i didn't think they would include this in the script but yes you can set up your encryption here but i'm not going to set up any disk encryption i'm gonna just leave it blank so as it states right there leave blank for no encryption so let's press enter and will move us on to the next state now the next question is desired host name for installation so i'm gonna just name this uh orch vm that's what i'll name it press enter that's the root name or the host name of the system now the next question is entering a root password but what it says if you read if you can see the recommendation it says leave blank to leave root disabled so that's what i'm gonna do i'm going to keep the root account disabled and create a super user account which is right there the next question so create a required super user with pseudo privileges let's type josh as my user account press enter now it's going to access for our password for that account and basically what this is all doing is just writing it to kind of like a file and then going through the installation uh with the information that we provide similar to you know a normal installer that's essentially what it does it takes all the information and then sets up the system based on your requirements that you put in at each question and then as you can see the next question is if you want to create another user account which i'm not going to create another user account we don't need to i'm um, gonna just press enter now this is one of the super cool ports uh you can set up a desktop environment a lot of people they have trouble actually going through the process of setting up the orch install or setting up the whole system and then having to install a desktop manager along with a desktop environment well this makes it super simple um it gives you a couple options right there it says enter a pre-programmed profile name if that you want if you want one installed so the first one is desktop minimal server you can actually set this up as a server and then zord so i'm gonna set it up as a desktop environment so i'm gonna use zero but they do have a minimal install which will just install the basis and i haven't installed that yet so i don't know exactly what it fully includes on the minimal version or excludes uh but the, the desktop option includes a desktop environment so that's what i'm gonna select right there and then they give you the option to install the desktop environment and it's super cool they have uh let me give you all the options that they have there they have awesome uh window manager uh budgie cinnamon deepen enlightenment gnome i3 kde lxqt uh mate sway and xfce4 and you guys all know that i'm an xfce4 fan so that's what i'm installed but you can install whichever one you want to for your desktop environment 
I like XFCE4, so that's what I'm gonna install for this demonstration, but 11 and press enter. And then right here, you can select the graphics core drivers. I'm just use uh, number one, which is uh, open source. That's the default. Now you can, you know, install AMD ATI, which is open source, Intel open source drivers, and then they have the NVIDIA closed source drivers and then the VMware and VirtualBox, uh, which I'm not using either one of those. So I'm gonna just use the uh, open source default. So let's press enter, boom. And it said, would you like to install Pipewire instead of Pulse Audio? And I'm gonna just go down and uh, install Pipe Pop, pipe wire uh instead of pulse audio whatever uh it doesn't matter this system is gonna get deleted after this uh but it, so it doesn't matter for me now it asks you if you want to what kernel you want to use for the system uh because orch linux has a couple different options they have the regular linux kernel they have a hoarding kernel they have a lts kernel and as you can see a zen kernel and for my personal system, I use the Horton, but since this is just a demonstration, I'm gonna leave it blank for the default Linux, which is number one. So we, we don't even have to type anything there. We could just press enter. So press enter. Now the next thing it asks, if you desire a web browser such as Firefox, Chromium, you may specify it in the following prompts. Uh, and this is essentially, you know, additional packages that you want to install and you can just type them in. So if you want certain things installed on the system, then you can type them in here. And all you have to do is put a space in between each one of them to get them installed. But basically what it's stating is only packages such as base, base devil, uh, Linux, Linux firmware, EFI boot manager and optional profile packages are installed. So let's just see what's all on there without installing anything separate. So I'm gonna leave it blank and let's press enter. Boom. Now the next thing, uh, this is your network settings. Now one thing I recommend people to do just to make networking super simple, just go down and copy the ISO network configuration to the installation. So however you're connected to the internet using the ISO, it will copy that configuration over to the install but you can also use a uh, network manager that's the second option and you can and this will allow you to manage your own internet connection and then also they do have a third option which is the device name i'm not sure what that does i'm gonna just roll with zero that way it'll copy the iso's network configuration uh, over to the system now next thing is time zone and it gives you some examples and I already know what mine is it's basically US and then forward slash and then Pacific and I got to make sure I type that in right but US Pacific and so that's what all I need to add just look on the Orch website to find the right time zone for you you know if you're not on us specific but as you can see if you're on the east coast us eastern will work as well so uh but let's press enter and then it says would you like to use automatic time synchronization so ntp with the default time server so i'm gonna I'm put y for yes I'm, i definitely want to do that and then basically this prints out all everything that you selected basically uh, it put it put all the stuff into kind of like a file or a temporary file and it will use this information during the install but we are done that's pretty much it of installing Orch Linux we just got to let it run through the installation and it'll install grub at the end it'll basically do everything for you and the last thing that'll pop up is a reboot so I'm gonna go down and press enter and let this thing run and we'll go through and I'll be back when it's when it's actually finishes. Okay, cool. So the install is done. And like I said, all you'll see is the terminal moving, but then it'll pop up and basically says, uh, uh, would you like to cheroot into newly created installation and perform post installation configuration? Now, I would recommend you do that. And that's one of the best ways to actually get a lot of the other applications installed. That's pretty much how I install a lot of things. 
Uh, I go down and get my desktop environment set up, but it basically did that. But I also would, I have like a list of applications that I install for my operating system. That's typically what I do. I go through and install all those applications and get everything set back up, configured the exact same way in there and then reboot the system and then we good to go. So all we have to do is I'm going to type no, but I would recommend you type yes, uh, just to do some post installation configuration, like I said, but I'm going to hit no. And as you can see, what it says is installation completed without any errors. So you can now, you may now re reboot the system. And then it gives you some stats on what exactly how long it took, I believe. Uh, 1% of CPU. I'm assuming that's how long, an uh, hour and 14 minutes. I'm not sure. I left and I just came back to the video uh, right now. But let's go down and reboot the system. And all you have to do is type reboot. And that'll shut down the system, bring it back up. And then I'll get my screen back corrected so you guys can see everything properly. And I hope you guys could see everything I did. But we're going to get it cracking. And as you can see, this is a login screen. It automatically has a, a desktop manager. So let's type in our uh, password for Josh account. And as you can see, there we go. XFCE. And now you have a working Arch Linux box with whatever desktop environment you have set up or you select it when you did the install. So if you ever want to try out Orch Linux, this is a simple way of actually installing it. But I do recommend me you guys go through the full install the Orch way so you can have a full understanding of how the operating system actually works and you can control pretty much everything you install on the system. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comments below. And of course, keep it techy.